Good morning. We are here in Orange County on a little morning hike. Here to check out some of the wildlife and biology near Harding Truck Trail in Mojeska Canyon. Now, uh, right at the start of this trail, looks pretty well maintained. I was walking by a couple of these plants over here and as you can see right there, they got a lot of these plants all nicely labeled so you can tell what they are, which that's really nice of the people maintaining this trail. So this is our first open view of this area. You can see that we are indeed inside of a canyon. You see the rocks up there and the surrounding geology looks like sediment deposits. So millions and millions of years ago, this was probably all underwater, all under ocean water. And those look like, I mean, that, that right there looks like, like sediment deposits probably from a landslide or, or flooding or something like that. Cause I can see like coarse material, fine material and everything. I don't know, I'm not a geologist, but I'm taking a guess here. This is typical Southern California canyon habitat. You got some pretty dense trees at the bottom of the canyon where there would be this creek. And we also got lining the sides of the canyon, these shrubs, really shrubby habitat. Coastal sage scrub is the name of this habitat. You got stuff like chemise, sages, buckwheats, toyons, laurel sumacs, scrub oaks, etc. I gotta say, this is this is a pretty nice trail. It is a Monday, so not too many people are here right now on this trail. It looks like it's just me. So I, I'm kind of unfortunate to have it all to myself. Now, as you can see, I got my net with me. So today's gonna be a bug day. So let's get it started. I'm seeing a lot of things fly around already. Sun's coming out, stimulating all the insects to get active. All the pollinators are gonna start pollinating flowers. You might even get some predators out there taking advantage of all those pollinators. So let's see what we can get. Ooh, got him, coach. Boom. There it is, right there. Let me get my little case out. Because I do not want to get tagged by this right here. It's happened before. I'm not about to let it happen again. Bam, right there. All right, so right here we have the famous tarantula hawk. Now, I think this is a male, and the reason why I think it's a male is because if you look at the antennae, they look pretty straight. The females, usually, they kind of curl over backwards. And the only, another reason why I think it's a male is because it's pretty small. Uh, these species can get pretty big, and this one doesn't look that big, so it's probably a male. So I don't probably have the risk of being stung by one. All right, let's go ahead and let this bad boy go. Go, go, go. Dude, there it is. All right, let's see if I can bag a female. So, if you want to go catch insects, flying insects in particular, you need a net and you need a container. And different size containers help too, because not all bugs are the same size. So as far as techniques go, when it comes to netting insects, I mean, really, if you want me to give you the best advice, you should try to figure it out yourself. You know, just <laughs> just take a couple swipes at some stuff. The way if I was to, if I was to really tell you, um, best way to do it, it's kind of just don't think about it. You know, whatever you see, take one swipe at it. Just follow through with your swipes, and then once you know that you have it, give it another swipe just to get it at the bottom of the net. And then when it's in this section right here, you can manipulate it and put it in your little container. There's tons of tarantula hawks out here right now, people. A lot of them. Now I wonder what that means. Does that mean that there's a lot of tarantulas coming out right now? Cause if you don't know about tarantula hawks, what they do, part of their life history, is the females will seek out spiders. That's what those individuals in that family do, spider wasps, pompilidae. 
they seek out spiders and in particular the species that we got here in Southern California, they seek out tarantulas and they'll grab those tarantulas, sting them to paralyze them, bring the tarantula back to a burrow, lay an egg on top of the tarantula. That egg will hatch and the larvae of that tarantula hawk wasp will consume the tarantula until it's ready to develop into an adult. Now what they actually eat is something different. They're they're more or less vegetarian. I've seen them feasting on nectar from flowers, feeding on pollen from flowers. They don't really eat the tarantula, except for only when they're kids. All right, there's a big female tarantula hawk coming up right here. Ah, and she's flying off trail. Damn. I mean, the good thing is there's no shortage of tarantula hawks here. So we're gonna get that big female and I'm gonna show you for sure. Don't even worry about it. Contrary to popular belief, I mean, if you're not from Southern California, or at least if you're from the city and don't get out much, I mean, you have no idea how many of these things are actually around. Oh, we got a butterfly here. Let's see, let's see. Come here, come here. Come back, come back, come back. Oh, it's coming back, it's coming back, it's coming back. Oh, 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 oh. it's too far, it's too far, it's too far. Oh, you messed up now. All right, so you see, it's on the ground right there. Can't ask, oh, it flew away. See, I'm trying to commentate and I actually can't focus on catching the actual insect. So next one that pops up, I'm just gonna shut up. All right, we're gonna hang out here for a little bit because I'm seeing a lot of activity, a lot of different flies. All right, I think I got one. Yep, I got one, all right. Okay, there we go. Boom, right there. All right, right here, what we have is a representative from the family Bombyliidae, also known as bee flies. Now, the reason they call bee flies is not only, well, not a lot of them look like bees, to be honest, but the reason they call them bee flies uh, is because they kind of do what bees do, meaning they, they like to pollinate stuff. They'll, you'll see them kind of hovering around flowers just kind of going from flower to flower, just like bees do, pollinating flowers and grabbing nectar from flowers. I just saw this one kind of like hovering around the buckwheat. Yeah, Bombyliidae, bee flies. All right, let them go. Next, I'm getting attacked by these little flies. I, I don't know exactly what they are. They might be black flies, simulids, but something's attacking my sweat right now. Dude, if you, if you ever wonder why you have all these flies flying around your face, uh, a lot of what they're looking for is moisture and probably salt from, from your sweat. So salt is actually a, a limited resource for animals in a lot of many different habitats. So anywhere there's a salt availability, like, you know, they're gonna go for it. And many of those insects who are salt loving, who, who like that salt, they're not shy to take it from you. So, Jesus, there are tons of tarantula hawks out right now. Tons of small males. Not seeing too many females. Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. Uh-oh, uh-oh, no, don't do it, don't do it. Don't do it. Okay, okay. I gotta be particularly careful because I think we got one here. So last time I caught one of these, I got stung. I am not trying to get stung again. This is the number two most painful sting in the world, next to the bullet ant, which can be found in Central and South America. So let me try to do this correctly. Now they have really long stingers, which can go straight through the net. See, I thought, ooh, that wasn't a stinger. That was just a plant. See, I'm paranoid. Now, I've been stung before, and it hurt a lot. It made me jump in the air and scream obscenities. I was in pain for about oh, 20 minutes. The pain kind of feels like a small nuclear explosion, and then it goes away, and then it explodes again, and then it goes away and explodes again. All right, boom, there. Now, that is the female. Tarantula hawk, family Pompilidae. Now, again, like I mentioned earlier, the females are much bigger, and these do sting. 
Some of you might have the question, uh, where did stingers evolve from? Well, I'm glad you asked. So stingers evolved from this structure found on many female insects called the ovipositor. Ovipositor is just some structure that female insects use to deposit their eggs. It's an egg depositor, ova meaning egg depositor meaning depositor, so ovipositor. And again, these females are probably out right now looking for eligible bachelors mating and then in a few weeks to a month uh, probably in a few weeks she'll be looking for some nice juicy spiders out there to lay her eggs on the female tarantula hawk and this is one bad all right we're gonna try to release this as safely as possible boom clean release see they're not trying to kill you they just want to get away whoa i just got dive bombed by a bird let's, let's get this butterfly Oh no, damn it, flew away. Oh, it's back. Oh, it likes that flower. All right, here we go. Backhand swipe. Oh, I missed it. Oh, I missed it. I missed it. I missed it. Ah, oh, damn. Sometimes you only get one chance. You swipe, you miss, and they're gone. The good thing is there's plenty of those butterflies. So I'll get one eventually. All right, new bug. Here we go. Let's see if we can successfully grab this one. I think I got it. I think I got it. Ooh, pick up some rocks with it, but it's all good. All right, here we go. Drop the net. All right. So right here, we have the pallid winged grasshopper. One of the most common grasshoppers found in Southern California. You can find them from anywhere, chaparral, desert, coastal sage scrub, everywhere. As long as there's really scrubby habitat, you can find these guys. And you can see underneath the hind wing is clear. The fore wing is kind of mottled in color. That's to blend in with the rocks and pebbles on the ground. This is why the species can be found in a vast array of habitats from deserts to scrublands, you know, anywhere where you got kind of open coverage, not too many big trees or whatnot. A lot of things eat them too. These, these, these things come in pretty thick wherever there's scrub habitat. Pallid wing grasshopper. All right, let's let it go. Woo. Oh, I missed, I missed again. I missed again. I missed, I am trash. <sighs> come back, come back, come back. It's not coming back. Oh. Well, 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 look what we have here. Did I get it? I got it. All right, I'm gonna use a container so you get a better look at this one. All right, first Lepidopter of the day. Whew. Right here, we got what I think, I think is called the Funeral Dusky Wing. It's in the family Hesperiidae, which is the family of skippers. Butterflies known as skippers. Um, this one I think is called a funeral dusking wing. It's a cool butterfly. It kind of pops out during, you know, late spring throughout the summer. So right now it's probably looking for its host plant, which I apologize. I cannot tell you what its host plant is right now uh, to lay its eggs and start its new generation for the upcoming year. But yeah, the funeral dusking wing. So you can see it's mostly a brownish butterfly, kind of dark, really drab colors. Uh, there are some patterns in there, but Unless you have it up close like this, it's kind of really hard to see. But uh, the way I know that it's a dusky wing is at the posterior margins of the hind wings, uh, it, it's, it's light colored or white colored. All right, let's let it go. Oh, look what we got here. All right, I see it. Let's please not mess this one up. Here we go. Oh, oh, I got it. I got it. I missed it. Man, thought I had it. Man, there's tons of these white butterflies around and I can't catch any. What is going on? Oh, here we got some. Did I get it? Yep, I got it. We got another butterfly. Boom. All right, there it is. All right, so right here, this is another very common butterfly. This is in the family Lysenidae. This is known as the gray, oh no. Oh, this this is the marine blue butterfly right here. 
and this is a common blue species one of the very one of the smaller butterfly species i don't i don't see too much of these apparently they're pretty common but yeah the marine blue and uh it's not showing you the top part of its wings right now because it's it's all folded up on the top side of its wings is it's like kind of bright iridescent shiny blue it's a it's a nice a nice color it's a real pretty color butterfly here we go oh i missed it again i missed it that was a good one too so th these these bugs they're not dumb okay they know what's up they know when they're being followed man hopefully i can show you some white butterflies instead of just talking about and teasing you oh. <laughs> Damn, man. I cannot catch a white butterfly. What is going on? I suck. I suck. I suck. I suck. All right. Instead of walking, we're going to try something else. We're going to let these bugs come to us. Where we're sitting at right now is uh, this kind of hilltop. Did I get it? Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Finally. Boom. There it is, people. So what we got right here is the common white in the family Pieridae, family of white butterflies and, and cabbage butterflies and everything. So this is the native one. This is the common white. And apparently today proving very difficult to catch. And these are pretty common because uh, you'll see them towards the end of the winter, beginning of the spring, throughout the year, basically. Dead middle of winter, you won't see them that much. They're around like a lot. So this is one of the common species of butterfly. Now there's a lot of white, butterflies that have different white patterns that you can't really tell exactly what they are unless you're looking really close and see like instead of chasing them you just you just got to sit and wait you know a lot of the times these bugs will just come to you all right another white butterfly now it's getting easier i'm a little winded just came from walking uphill for about a quarter mile non-stop so forgive me if I sound like I'm out of breath. But we have another beautiful specimen. <clears throat> Representative of the family Pieridae again. Now, this is not the common white. This is the checkered white. Another species of Pierid that can be found here in Southern California. You can see why they're called checkered white because instead of being like all white with a couple of spots they have this uh kind of nice checker spatter uh checker pattern now this one seems like it might be a little old because the pattern on it is pretty faded but nonetheless there's another species of butterfly for you i got it i got it now this one people this one is a real cool specimen right here boom right there we have a representative from the Acilidae family. And the Acilidae are commonly known as robber flies. We call them robber flies because they're predatory and they like to eat other flying things, specifically wasps and bees. So they like to catch wasps and bees while they're flying in the air. So they'll intercept them while they're flying in the air. And they have these piercing mouth parts, which basically kind of scissor cut into whatever they're eating and they, just eat the juices from inside, making a meal out of it. These are really cool flies. There's a number of species in California. This is just one of them. This is this is a pretty big specimen, to be honest. And uh, it's pretty cool. All right, let's let it go. By this thing, I'm gonna try to catch it. It's a fly. Where is it? I hear you. Uh, let Oh, in my face. Oh, my God. Oh, I got it. I got it. <laughs> Yo, I had, to, I had to put the net up to my face in order to catch it. All right. These little right here are, me personally, one of the most hated flies out there. I mean, I love them, but I hate them. And I'll tell you why in a second. But let me show you what it looks like. Boom, right here. These little bastards right here. This is in the family Tabanidae, otherwise known as horseflies and deerflies. Now, the reason why these are little assholes, because they bite and their bites 
hurt. I mean, imagine like taking a pair of nail clippers to your skin. That's roughly what it what it feels like. I mean, probably not as bad, but then some of them get really big. Like this is a deer fly. Oh shit, I'm getting bit right now. Ah. All right, I'm, I'm gonna walk and talk. I'm gonna walk and talk. All right, so <clears throat> this, this is a deer fly because it's small, but there are larger ones known as horse flies. And those also bite people. And those suck and they're they're pretty common too they have aquatic larvae at least some of them have aquatic larvae um they they tend to hang out near near waterways i know we're we're not really super close to water right now but there are streams down there there are dry streams and somewhat moist streams so it makes sense to see these guys over here but these guys are biters they have a taste for flesh and for some reason specifically human flesh so Make sure if you ever hiking out in the midsummer, bring some repellent and make sure you put the repellent on thoroughly because whatever spot you miss, these little fools will find it and they'll bite you right there where you didn't put any repellent. So here it is, tabanids, deer flies. All right, didn't have the camera rolling, but I just caught another grasshopper. All right, now this is an interesting one. All right, what we got right here, I think is known as Saussure's blue wing grasshopper. And uh, this, this is a really, really ornate pattern on its wings. If you look underneath, if I can get its wings open. Boom, nice bright blue wings right there. Isn't that cool? Now you can see like the camouflage pattern that they have blends really well with this nice pebbly, kind of cobbly or gravelly uh, bottom here. You can find, find them in a lot of uh, chaparral, even, even in kind of desert areas too. There's a species of grasshopper that looks very similar to this called the pallid wing grasshopper, but the pallid wings don't have the blue underwings. These guys also have these blue, this blue tinge on their legs right here. Pretty cool grasshopper in California. All right, let's let it go. So I just saw something fly across the trail here and I don't need a net for it, but here we go. Boom, right here. Oh, this is a nice one. So right here we have an assassin bug and as you can see, it's flying around. So it does count as a flying insect. This is in the family Red Duvidae, the family of assassin bug. Now it's a true bug in the order Hemiptera. So it's related to aphids cicadas and stink bugs assassin bugs are special because they're little predators now i don't know if you can tell but their front legs are they're a little more buffer than their rear legs and they have this mouth part that is basically like a freaking spear and it just like injects it into whatever it catches and sucks out the insides very efficient way of feeding Many of these are, are venomous. Um, they do hurt when they bite. It actually hurts quite a bit. But uh, yeah, assassin bugs, another cool find today. I don't know, I don't know the name of this species, um, but it's a cool one that I, I don't really see too often. I've seen this once before around this area too. But uh, yeah, this is a nice one right here. You see that piercing mouth part right there. That's the business end right there. So I think that concludes our little trip here in Majeska Canyon in uh, lovely Orange County, California. Right now I'm in the middle of it. I don't know if you can see out there that civilization in which unfortunately I need to head back because I got some office work to do. But it's been good. Glad to show you a lot of flying insects today. Do a little network, bug work, you know what I'm saying? And uh, hopefully next time I'll come out with something else when we biologize. But until then, stay up, peace up, learn something.